Hello everyone, I'm Mal, and welcome to this mini-guide of how to build an LRM boat in the early game for Battletech. Okay, so after the first priority mission or story mission in the campaign, you're going to get access to a CN9-A, or a Centurion as it's better known. So let's go ahead and refit this. By default, it's considered to be really kind of a, like, in-your-face, as you can see here, Brawler and General Assault. But it makes a really good makeshift LRM boat. Long range, indirect, uh, support mech using missiles as its primary weapon. So how do you go about doing it? Well, first off, let's go ahead and completely strip off what it's got. And let's see here. Now you may or may not have the ideal equipment to put on right away. So you can check um, different stores on different planets or as you get more equipment, you get more uh, weapon choices, then you can swap things out. You should really pretty much consistently be able to field at least this basic setup, which is why I'm going to show you this. It's not the ideal setup, it's just the one I believe that you'll be able to do right off the bat. So as soon as you acquire the Centurion, you should be able to build this configuration. So we're going to use three LRM-10s, meaning they are long-range missiles, they fire 10 per salvo. So we're going to go ahead and put three of those in the left torso. And you can see here, it's got three hard points for missiles. This is why this mech is flexible enough to do this, because there's enough hard points and it's a big enough mech, it can actually carry some pretty big rocket launchers. So that's why I say that this is a good choice for this. It does have um, a couple of energy hard points. Um, it's actually got an auto cannon over here in this arm, as well as a support. Um, so you can, it is flexible, you can certainly build it the way it was intended. Um, but that's not the purpose of this guide, right? So, <laughs> alright, so we've got three LRM-10s over here. And then we're going to need to make sure that it has plenty of ammo. Because once that runs out, and it goes pretty quick, then this mech is not going to be able to do anything for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to stack up four units of it, two in each leg. Really don't want ammo anywhere in your center torso area if you can keep 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 from it. Excuse me. So this is your basic first uh, LRM boat that you can use in the very very early part of the campaign. So you would use a a scout mech or a brawling type mech, like a like a mech that you use that's very tanky to spot for this mech that'll be at the very edge of its range ideally, sensor lock a target, um, and then fire indirect arcs of missiles. Uh, at your opponents from relative safety. And it works very, very well to strip off large chunks of armor. The disadvantages, I think, to LRMs is is primarily that unless you do a precision shot, it, it can be a little bit sloppy in terms of where that damage goes. So especially if you're doing an arcing shot, an indirect shot, um, you do have chances to hit the head, which is, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you generally don't hit it enough to actually get a kill and then the damage gets spread out over, say, the head, you know, center torso, left and right, like the upper parts of the torso, because that's where the rockets are coming down. Now, that isn't inherently a bad thing, just what you use them for. I think I think LRM boats are very, very good at uh, chewing up armor, you know, sort of across a range. Um, and then I think it's very good at finishing off targets, particularly smaller targets that are trying to try to get on the run. Um, you have a smaller, like a light mech or even a medium mech breaking a runoff and you can sensor lock them to reduce some of their evasion and then lob a bunch of rockets at them and as long as they've taken at least some damage, you can finish them off before they get out of said range. So you're useful for that. Um, so even on missions like, for instance, escort missions where you typically want a bunch of fast mechs so you can keep up with what you're escorting, you could also take this mech. It may not be the fastest mech, but it has such a large range you could sort of move along somewhat, you know, slowly behind the convoy and still provide plenty of fire support. And again, from relative safety. So let's take a look at what that actually looks like in the field. Okay, and we want this to be an indirect shot. Now, if you have line of sight and you fire basically at a lower trajectory, then it'll be easier for your shot to hit. The disadvantage is that then you also might be in range of the enemy weapons. They might have a clear line of sight at you. So it's just something to something to kind of bear in mind. Ideally, you want to be doing indirect indirect shots to keep your mech safe. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump us back to cover here. Ready, set, 
which is one of the reasons why I choose to have, this is exactly what I was talking about, about why I like to have jump jets on my Centurion. You don't have to do that, it does add weight, but I think it gives you flexibility. So this Centurion back here is tucked away, no one has a line of sight to it, and it has multiple targets that it can fire on. We're going to go ahead and light up this spider right here. And since I really want to make an impression right away, I think we'll go ahead and spend some morale and just take this guy out, potentially. We've got 85% chance to hit, and we can choose where we're going to go, so we're going to go for the center torso. Rockets away. Structure exposed. It's got stability damage. That's the other thing, it's like a few more shots and, and that thing's going to fall down. I'm going to take this shot. On. And there you go. Boom. And the majority of that armor was stripped off by one shot from the LRM boat. Okay, now here's a mech that's got, you know, significantly more armor. Let's see how quickly we can take this down. Let's come right down on this part that's already without armor. And in theory, we should be able to blow off this thing's left torso and arm, and take a good amount of its firepower with it. All weapons are go. Nice. Unsteady. Didn't blow the arm off, but we're close. Yep, and down you go. Ooh. <laughs> That's always fun. And we're going to go for the center torso. Take this. What kind of condition are you in now? Oh, pretty much toast. Okay. There you go, another one down. So you can see very quickly how you can control the battlefield, keep your mechs relatively safe, and and tear other mechs apart by concentrating your fire, and again, using indirect fire to limit what the enemy can do to you, and forcing them into positioning that'll work to the advantage for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little mini guide on indirect fire. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you're not, you know, you haven't been around the channel before, feel free to hit a like, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and join the community. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Mal, and I'll see you later.